This is The Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, and welcome to today's edition of The Pit Stop, where we, all of our sim racing buddies, are here just to talk about sim racing. Welcome to today's show, and I hope you all had a great weekend. Happy Monday to everybody. Uh, happy Mother's Day once again. I don't know what you guys did. I drove all the way out to the Palm Desert. My mom lives in Palm Springs. Drove all the way out to Palm Desert just to spend the day with my mom, brother, and I went out there. Had a great day, uh, incredible weather, and did a lot of driving, but it wasn't racing and it wasn't sim racing, just a lot of miles in the car, uh, but did have a good time and a great weekend, and I am ready to kick things off here with Monday and talk about sim racing and everything going on, and you know, we are coming off of, uh, man, we're coming off of one of the biggest eSport weekends in, that I can think of in, in recent history. You had Gran Turismo and Race Room both going at it at... Nürburgring, Nordschleife. You also had uh, the Formula One event going on in with, in conjunction with Catalonia. Uh, it was just a busy. I mean, th three big esport tours were all in action. In addition to that, you had iRacing uh, doing their IWGPS over the weekend. It was a huge weekend for sim racing. Uh, if you we're at your computer watching the broadcast. There was racing aplenty to watch. And this was one of those first weekends where our sport or hobby felt like, I mean, I, I, I was able to watch eSport. I was able to watch sim racing on the level that I normally would watch real life racing over the weekend. And I think about, I watched a little bit of the 24 hour real race and I was watching it via stream because it wasn't on my television. And it just kind of shows you, wow, look at the changing of times. We do watch racing events on our computers now. Uh, if I'm already at my computer, then how big a difference is it if I'm watching a, a real-life broadcast or a sim racing broadcast? Anyway, uh, just my thoughts uh, on a Monday after this huge, huge weekend. And I don't know if everybody here grasps just how big that is. Uh, I want to thank Michael Clark. Um for his generous donations. You guys see him donating in the super chat all the time. Donuts and coffee, treats for Max and all the good things. Michael, I, I just want to thank you directly right now. Uh, it makes a big deal. Uh, I want to thank all the patron guys. Sorry, I'm doing my thing this morning, you guys. But I want to thank all the patron guys. The, the support I get uh, behind the scenes is amazing. Uh, I want to thank El Bucho and Jesse. Um, and I'm not... You guys... There are some people who are making some very, very big changes and differences beyond my control even. Uh, and the things that are going on behind the scenes are incredible. And I just I want to thank you all. So that's that's coming off of uh, Mother's Day. I thought, man, there are a lot of people I do want to thank, including my mother. Uh, so what is going on in the world of sim racing? Forza Motorsport, they have their new Grand Prix Circuit Brickyard Challenge, the Forza IndyCar Challenge. Do you think you can take down Joseph Newgarten, Hinchtown, Robert Wickens, and Connor Daly in Forza 7? Check it out in the Forza RC IndyCar Challenge events. Two rival events with 16 possible rewards now in the game. That could be fun. And I talk about TV uh, with the IndyCar regular race happening today. Kind of kicks off the beginning of the Indy 500 enthusiasm coverage on TV. Um... So this is one, you know, we watch it on TV, we want to emulate it in sim, and there's your Forza challenge to go after uh, doing that. Hello, Lion Cart, Lionheart, see you here in the in the chat with us. So Gran Turismo, you know, uh, this is at their Twitter feed, and I could sit here all day telling you about the big world tour event that went on over the weekend at Nürburgring. They got video. They got, oh, they got pictures. Look at, uh, tell me, did they not, like, how much of a copycat is this of the McLaren thing? So they had these Puma sweat jackets ready with name tags ready uh, to put everybody in them. And the whole group ends up looking like the McLaren group. Isn't that kind of funny? I thought that was a little, uh, little uh, copycat right there. But lots of cool stuff going on. A uh, huge event going on. And we are seeing the groundwork of... The eSport heroes, you know, right now, it's hard to grasp this today, but when we go down here and we look at Giorgio Mang Mangano, I'm sorry about that murdering of your name, uh, Patrick Blazin, uh, 
Anthony Duvall. You know, that's like saying, you know, uh, Schumacher, Senna. Well, no, no, no. Now I put them a little too high up. That's like, uh, you know, saying uh, Grosjean and uh, Verstappen and, uh, you know, all your Formula One guys of today. So uh, there you go. Jake Sperry, we talk about you today. We talk, you have a story here that piqued my interest. Uh, anyway, here are some of the trophies coming out of the pike. So Jaroslav Honzik with his uh, trophy. I believe this was a participation trophy. I think he took seventh place, if I'm not mistaken. And this is in the race room side of things. So we're switching gears from Gran Turiz Turismo. Turismo. <laughs> um, but it, it, uh, it basically, look at that. Oh, that's the first place trophy. I'm sorry about that. Uh, that was posted by Yaroslav. Uh, here he is with the car. And, you know, this, this competition was also going on. And I have a little bit of information on that one. Where's my uh, other article here? Oh, I've lost my place. Uh, we'll come back to the other topic. I have a little more on the race room. Our buddies at Avid Chronic had a great weekend uh, at the race room side of the competition at Nurburg, and we'll talk about that a little bit more today. I'm going to plug it, and then we'll, tomorrow we'll talk about that in greater detail. Uh, let's come back to that topic real quick because I think have things a little out of order. I apologize for that. Um, I had no intention of leaving on Rush on here. Oh, I'm a mess. It's Monday. Somebody's got a case of the Mondays. So, in iRacing World Championship Grand Prix Series, we have a total shakeup today. Now, one thing that is common is that you'll see that VRS Coanda still took top spot. So, these guys are just, that team is the best iRacing team in the Grand Prix side of things right now. Uh, Mac Backham won the race. Kevin Ellis in second. Joshua Rogers in third. Uh, Mitchell DeJong, of our, our big names that we expect, Mitchell DeJong finished in 10th. Freck Schothorst finished in 7th. Um, but again, where are the big names? Where are the season championship contenders? Uh, just to give an idea, the type of race that went on, this is at Race Spot TV where you can watch all around 5 at Monza. But just like real life, you know, we, we talk about sim racing and I hear people talking about wrecking all the time. And at the same time, if you watch Formula One, you watch NASCAR, whatever your Indy car, you are going to see crazy carnage all over the place all the time. A lot of times in turn one at the beginning of races. Uh, this weekend, Grosjean on cold tires got loose and just completely, you know, uh, went into the path and took out, what, four other cars. Uh, can you point the finger? Can you point blame? Well, really, no more or less than you can in our races. It happens. Racing, you take chances. That is the point. Anyway, an exciting race and a total shakeup in the points this weekend in the IWGPC. Also, as things are kicking off, I didn't get a chance to watch any of this at all, but Eldora kicked off the Outlaw, Sprint, uh, Outlaw Series, uh, Dirt Series for iRacing, and uh, it was uh, Ellie, Elby, I'm sorry, is his name. Uh, missed his full name. Sorry about that. Oh, look, Nevin, Nick, uh, Adam Elby pulled out the win. So things are just starting to get going, and you're going to start hearing more and more about those guys and what's going on in the whole Dirt iRacing Championship, uh, which is phenomenal to even be saying such a thing. Also taking part in this weekend's festivities, the guys at FA Racing. Uh, they went there and they actually had, of all the results we've seen from the G2 team so far, this is probably their worst weekend yet, but they went up against some serious real-life sim racing contenders. And I say real-life because that Nordschleife event did bring out the big guns. Uh, anyway, uh, they... they Overall, they did okay. They had a good time, and this posting here by G2 Nestor of these guys there at the whole race room event and taking part in that from their perspective. But again, probably the worst showing yet from those guys as far as that goes. As I mentioned, also going on, and I haven't seen any video yet. I'm sure it's out there, uh, but 
we had the the round three at Catalonia going on in uh, the F1 eSports. Sorry, you guys. Uh, Patrick Holzman winning overall. Uh, platform by platform, we have uh, Country Apollo 90, Ycoms and Cars, Streets. And, you know, this is this is dictating the who is eligible for the F1 eSport draft in 2018. So these are very important spots that we're talking about here. When we look at the Xbox, the PlayStation with Sammy Lib, TGT S Subtle 69 FU, <laughs> Floris Dwers, 14 and third. And then on the PC is where we're going to see Patrick Halsman, Liebert, both from LDLC and VP Merrick leading the way. Um, oh, awesome. Awesome. Yeah, no Forexes while you're out there, but that's cool. That's great to hear. Uh, the show's made for talking on the road. Uh, BSIM has an article here talking about the update to build 1110 that was released. So in in true sense to the modern era of putting out a big patch, you then patch your patch. But I applaud when companies do that rather than just let it wait for the next update. I mean, R Factor, with, they're kind of almost on a monthly update, it seems, right now. They could easily push things back, but they are quick to uh, do it 11 days after the update. They've already got their fix for it. Jake's here in the audience. Jake Sperry, everybody. Uh, here's an article. Uh, John Alacy is eSport bound with his own academy. Uh, you can see here running a Sparco Simrig Thrustmaster wheel uh, in his full driving suit. But if you don't know, I mean, you can't be a racing fan without knowing the name John Alacy. Uh, he is a Formula One winner and obviously retired. But at this point, he is getting in on it as well. And this could be a whole other eSport opportunity for... A whole other group of guys. You know, at some point, if all of the uh, eSport keeps growing at the rate that we're seeing, you got to think about it. These teams are starting to get filled up with the biggest names, right? The obvious choices, the Bono Huiz, uh, you know, the, the Enzo Benitos. You know, these guys are already the number one picks, and they will go to teams. But when you think about it, just with the F1 eSport alone, that's going to gobble up a bunch of the best of the best drivers. And we're getting to the point where I think you're going to start seeing guys really specializing. And you're not going to see a lot of guys playing multiple sims. They're going to be like, I'm an F1 2018 guy. Or I am an iRacing guy. But to be the best of the best, it's going to get more and more specialized. I mean, you think of track and field 50 years in ago, and a guy might run the 100, the 200, and the 400. Um, now it's getting closer to where those guys, for the most part, you get your freaks of nature. But for the most part, you become a specialist in your event. You think of uh, uh, a lot of, of sports and how they evolve over time. And maybe they're guys who played multiple positions, but not anymore so much. Uh, except for those rare, rare breed. Um, but I think we're going to see more and more of that. But my point here is, here is another eSport team with a top name. It's going to draw attention uh, it's going to have a bigger avenue to sponsorship, having a bigger name associated with it. Uh, it looks like it's a package deal already working with Sparco, Thrustmaster, and other companies. So this could be another big deal. Speaking of deals, but of a different type, uh, Fanatical is another place where you can get these bundle of games. Now, this is a bizarre bundle of games, but the reason I'm mentioning it is because it is 97% off. So... You can get $115.93, $115.93 worth of games for $249. So it is sold through Fanatical as a bundle on Steam. But we're talking about Revhead, Giant Machines 2017, which I'd probably enjoy for a few minutes. Train Mechanics Simulator. I know a few of you guys out there would uh, would definitely uh, enjoy that. Car Mechanic Simulator, Demolish and Build. Robot Squad Simulator and Fun Fair Ride Simulator. So a very bizarre collection of games for two dollars and forty nine cents. So if you're uh, looking for some other entertainment, did I just see Brendan Lee? Bigger names don't need bigger results. I agree, especially when you get to guys who are specialists in in uh, 
in certain types of games where, you know, we, the sim racing community, might not know them, but maybe in their particular ranks, they're extremely well known. But um, anyway, hey, Brendan, how you doing? Welcome to the show. Brendan Lee, if you don't know, that is the F1 2017 reigning champ. Uh, so there you, there you go. If you don't know, you can see the interview, and he's been on the show a couple of times and uh, very accomplished and very involved in what's going on in the future of eSport right now. Other good deal, straightforward from Steam on a set of course. So right now, for 75% off, you can get the Ultimate Edition. That's everything they've made for it for $19.88. If you wanted to race with us in our Sim Racing Systems Porsche 911 RSR series, all you need is the game and I believe Porsche Pack 3 double, triple, check me. But right now you can get the game for $9.99. That's 50% off. The mod, or the pack, I should say, for two fifty. So for basically $12.48, you could be racing. If you don't have it, that's pretty cheap. Or for nineteen eighty eight, you can get the whole kit and caboodle. <coughs> Excuse me. Is that right, Nick? In the in now, is it going to be renewed? Um, and have they determined what it's going to be? I mean, in, I don't know. Right now, it seems like even more so that they'd give that license back to them, but maybe they want to open the door up too. But right now, it seems like they're kind of in cahoots on the whole thing with them having a draft and all that. Um, but yeah, I mean, maybe they want to bust it wide open. So anyway, okay. Uh, just a cool video, not really sim racing related, but it does slightly overlap things that we have interest in. But here is the showdown between Ryan Turek and a Pro Drifter versus the autonomous race car. So you've probably all seen the robo car, the stripped down car. Well, they let the car go at it on its own, and this is at the Formula E Rome circuit, and then they let Ryan have a go. And I'm not going to give away the results. It's a cool video. It's worth watching. It's certainly entertaining and good to listen to and watch. Um, so if you check this out, just do a search for Ryan Turk, uh, Pro Drifter versus Autonomous Race Car and Human versus Machine Challenge. And if you're interested in that, you can find out who won the race. And uh, that's all I'm going to say. I want you to go check it out. Another cool thing has nothing to do with what we do directly, but we all know Star Wars. But these guys have built this extremely elaborate interior of the Millennium Falcon. Uh, and the reason I'm mentioning it is because it was sent in to me, and I like to share what you guys send in. Uh, but the other reason I mention it is, at the end, they ask, get asked, why would they spend this much time building something this elaborate? And they go on to say, because you know what? It's a really good distraction from paying the bills and my daytime job and the other struggles that we have with life on a day-to-day -day basis. And it was brought to my attention, and I agree. That kind of parallels why a lot of us are so adamant or passionate about sim racing. You know, it's, yes, we love racing. Yes, we love the competition. Yes, we love the hobby and sport and all the sides of it. But at the same time, isn't it that perfect distraction from real life? Isn't it that ability to just kind of escape our troubles of the day, hang out with our friends, and do some racing, or talk about sim racing, or just lose ourselves in our hobby or interest? So again, I thought it was cool. We all love Star Wars. We all love the Millennium Falcon. If anybody is out there and they don't, you probably need a therapist because we all love Star Wars. <laughs> no, that sounded too strong. I don't mean to call anyone out like that. Other cool video that has nothing to do with sim racing, but this guy built this very elaborate, hands-on, first-person view remote-controlled cars, which is cool. I mean, I don't think he's the first, but look at he's using some very low-end equipment to accomplish his goals is the point here. Um, but, you know, anyone who's flown a drone knows this is the best way to fly. I've seen videos of guys with jet cars. Uh, anyway, just if you're looking for a quick hobby, easy way to do it or inspiration for something else to escape our daily uh, lives, 
this could be a cool project type thing for you. You can just see a hands-on with FPV remote controlled cars on YouTube. And now I'm going to kind of blow through a few of these, but I think we have a few more true sim racing stories as well. Um, why can't I mine Bitcoin with my PC anymore? Anyway, this is an article that talks about the whole... It's a, it, For those who know nothing about mining, myself being on the front of that list, uh, it allows... Uh, it kind of explains how in the beginning it was supposed to be easier, and as it became more prevalent it would become more difficult to mine, uh, to keep it in control so that it just didn't be like if we were to flood our market with a billion dollars in, in dollars, it would devalue the dollar. Uh, same thing here with Bitcoin mining. So when we think about the volatility of Bitcoin and why it goes up and down, part of it is how many people are mining versus how many are trading the mining. But it is becoming harder and harder to uh, Bitcoin. So when you had that whole explosion of Bitcoining, it made it actually more difficult to create those coins to kind of control it. Anyway, uh, here's an article at waytoomanygames.com reviewing Aquamoto Racing, like sort of a jet ski type racing game, which could be a lot of fun to play, I'm sure. Maybe not our cup of tea. Uh, Final Verdict was a 5.5, which isn't exactly a glaring review, but... If you've wondered about that game, you'll probably not find a review here, but you will find it at waytoomanygames.com. Uh, DualShockers.com has an article here from Kazanori, and this one got sent in to me by a couple of people, and it popped up on my news feed uh, radar over the weekend. But an article here from Kazanori Yamuchi, and one of the most influential people. We were talking about Jeff Kamand in the chat earlier. Uh, but Kazanori, no doubt, he is one of the most influential people in sim racing. And he talks about things that need to be improved for a much, much better Gran Turismo. So they are certainly not resting on what they've built and saying, hey, that's what it is. But he has a vision for a much better Gran Turismo still. And that's great to hear. Uh, last year, I did watch a Rocket League finals on tv and i found myself far more captivated to it than i ever would imagine and then i played rocket league with the the guys and we actually had a really good time playing it i could play that more often uh than than i get a chance to but if you watch the finals which are going to be streamed live they're going to have dlc as a reward for watching so if you've ever enjoyed it will be aired on friday june 8th at 2 o'clock on Twitch at Twitch TV Rocket League. Uh, but this is at the xboxhub.com, and it just lets you know where you can watch those finals and how you can get that DLC by watching the finals. Uh, PlayStation is going on a Road to Greatness tour, kind of run around with their moving truck with their gameplay and all of their VR stuff there to entertain people in various different cities. And if you want to find out if the PlayStation VR Tour, these are the ones on the calendar right now, and I understand they're going to add more dates to it. So, uh, but you can win prizes, and it could be just a cool event finding, seeing gamers, or just seeing what PlayStation does to promote their brand out on their big tour. Kind of interesting. I don't see they're coming to Los Angeles. Closest they're coming to me is Phoenix, Arizona, and I can guarantee you, I am not driving all the way to Phoenix for the PlayStation Road to Greatness Tour. Uh, but some might. Some might. So not to take anything away from it. Uh, NVIDIA. So GTC, Taiwan, and Computex 2018 big conference goes on in Taiwan uh, is where the head of NVIDIA, I've met this guy, by the way. He's a Ferrari fanatic, and I've met him actually a couple of times. Uh, but this guy... Uh, we'll be there, this guy. <laughs> uh, he will be there, uh, in order to make several different announcements about NVIDIA and what's going on. But officially, or rumor has it, this is where they will officially be making the announcement of the 1100 series. What do we want to call it? Um, so we know about it. It's not like it's a secret or a rumor, even. But as far as an official announcement of the going on, it supposedly is going to happen over at this trade show going on. Tech Power Up has an article talking about a 43-inch Wasabi Mango. 
UHD 430. It's the world's first commercially available 120 hertz 4K gaming monitor. Uh, that is a big 120 hertz monitor. That is a huge 4K 120 hertz 43 inch monitor. Uh, but it'll only set you back just, I mean, not too much. Only $1,400 for one of those bad boys. Um, so, uh, there you go. Uh, this is a cool story. So, when we talk about our, uh, Rudy Van Buren's, we talk about our Atsy Kirkoffs, we talk about our Mitchy Hoyers, the guys who do sim race driving for various teams. Well... This guy, if you don't know his name, if you don't know his face, this is Jake Dennis. And he is Red Bull's sim racing driver. And apparently they're going to let him get a shot in an F1 test drive. Um, those opportunities are not always just simulator. And I'm not sure the purpose of this test. And if you want to find out more about it, this is at FormulaOne.com. This is big time news in the world of Formula One. Um, but... This guy's going to get a, a real shot. Now, uh, he's no, this is not his first time in a race car. Uh, this isn't just some sim racer off the street, so to speak. Uh, but it just shows you that these guys, opportunities can come. You never know the avenue to real life racing. We've seen articles talking about the, the, the path to real life racing and sim racing being one of them. And one of those premium sim racing jobs. And, you know, I guess the reason I'm saying this Sure, McLaren, they're going to go dedicate themselves on that level. But let's let's get real for a minute. I don't mind taking this diversion. I hope you guys don't. But here in America, I don't care what city you live in, there's a good chance there is a racing team somewhere near you. Can that team even afford a simulator? Would they if they could afford it? Can that that team afford a sim driver? What if you were to volunteer your services? Now, I know that's volunteering, but I mean, we're talking about avenues to real-life race teams, avenues to potential test drives. What would you do? But maybe it would be worth going to some Toyota Atlantic team and saying, hey, do you guys have any kind of simulator program? And maybe you could put it together for no reason other than asking. Sure, from the top down, we're seeing it come this way. But why not work from the bottom up is my point if you want to get in. How do you get into sim racing? I mean, into real life racing? Yeah, you can go to school, but you can always start sweeping floors at a team. And I tell you, they reward hard work because they don't pay well. So they reward hard work in racing. That's my point. That's my that's my official rant for Monday. Um, Jack Kitely uh, took second place overall in the race room Nurburg Esport Championship. Could have won the whole thing. Uh, and I am going to have more. Mitchie's here in the chat. He sent me gigabytes and gigabytes of photos, so much so that on a Monday morning, I couldn't even get through it quickly enough to justify uh, talking about it properly. So tomorrow, we're going to do a deeper recap uh, about... Avid Chronic Racing and the huge, huge weekend that Avid Chronic had at the race room uh, eSport competition at Nürburgring. So we're going to talk about that tomorrow in much, much greater detail. No, bitchy, if you missed it, we are talking about guys who do sim race uh, prep. So... Uh, sorry to go back on everybody else, but this is important to Mitchie. He needs to hear about it, and he needs to go back and hear my mini rant. But Jake Dennis is getting a shot uh, to test drive a real F1 car. So um, that is that is uh, a huge news. But I was talking about guys like you who do sim race coaching and driving for real-life teams, that that could lead to an opportunity to sit in the car. That That's what I'm talking about. Um, and then we are talking about Jack and the great weekend that he had and that all Avid Chronic had and that you had sent me gigabytes and gigabytes of photos, but I couldn't even get through it well enough, um, to, to, uh, do it justice. So we're going to talk more about that tomorrow. Wolfgang, yes, I saw your comment over there. Yes, we're going to talk about that more in one second. Uh, here's an article at Trusted Reviews. 
and we joke about these kind of articles, but the best racing wheels, the top wheels for Xbox One, PS4, and PC. And I do mention it because, well, they actually did a pretty decent job on this one. Uh, Fanatic CSL Elite, that is a phenomenal wheel for that. Um, Thrustmaster T150, hey, it's not a bad starter wheel for that at all. Logitech G29, which, that's a world championship wheel. Of course, that's a good one. Uh, T300, sure, sure. So anyway, they basically covered all their bases, and it was a pretty equal. I mean, those are the, if people sent me an email, those are the same recommendations that I would have given is my point. So my hat's off for, to Trusted Reviews for a decent, for once, uh, best wheels article by a non-sim racing company. PC Gamer, talking about uh, you can get an HP Mixed Reality headset refurbished for only 160 bucks right now. So if you just really wanted to try it out but you don't want to spend the money, I'm not a huge fan of refurbished products, but maybe this is one case where I'd make the exception to the rule because I certainly don't want to pay full retail for, for Mixed Reality at this point in time. But maybe for 160 bucks, it'd be worth it. Maybe for 160 bucks, you can justify it because your kids are going to love playing with it too. If you have kids, I don't have kids. But uh, next story, and I'm just going to talk about this just very briefly because I missed the end and it kills me because I watched. Oh, I probably watched eight hours of Nurburgring 24 hours on uh, streaming online this weekend, and I guess the end after 24 hours was just an exciting finish between the the AMG Mercedes and the Porsche GT3. And I try to watch these videos that are here and it wouldn't play. So I haven't even seen, but, oh, I was so bummed that I didn't get to see the end. And now that I see this article, it totally, totally bums me out. So I'm gonna have to go search that out and watch that for my own entertainment today. So that is gonna do it for the main portion of the sim racing news, but I do want to thank uh, and show off. Andreas Castaneda has sent a couple of pictures of his rig, and I'm always asking you guys to do that in order to just, I want, you know, you'll see a rig and you get inspiration from it. You know, if you're a profile or an 80-20 guy, you might see this and be like, ooh, you know what? Where did he get those brackets? I like the way he did that. Or, ooh, I like the way he did his, his brake and shifter and he has sequential H pattern and E brake up on that rig. So I'm showing you this rig, but the other reason I'm saying it is because on Friday we sh talked about an oh shit moment. Uh, and anyway, I had another person send me some uh, photos of the pressure that I put him under in Friday's race. So Andreas Castaneda had to deal with the bright orange Simpit Porsche and me on the charge. And he sent some cool pictures from his perspective of me working my th way through and him having one of those oh shit moments. There you go. I love that photo right there. I, I right there, that's, I'd print that to be honest with you. Uh, I like to see him in a paint job, but even then, uh, like a, a factory Porsche versus a team Porsche or something. Um, anyway, thank you Andreas for sen sending those in. Much appreciated. And then the last thing that I'm gonna talk about is Wreckfest with Frenemies. This is becoming a regular. Tonight, we're going to do something a little different. So, we are going to do another session of Wreckfest. And if you guys have not watched any of our Wreckfest events, you're missing out on some really good laughs. We, it is, it's such a great game. Uh, it has such wonderful physics for what it is. And we have some very cool uh, people who do it. You hear the laughter, you hear the camaraderie, and you hear the anger and evil within as we try to take each other out of every race. We are going to do another episode of Wreckfest. I'm going to get an email out to the entire patron group welcoming, every, welcoming everybody to join us at 6 p.m. Special treat. I'm going to have two, already have two lined up. I'm going to have maybe three people also on the stream. So you're only going to see my in-game view, but you should see my face and my reaction to everything and... We're going to get two or three more people in on that as well. We'll see. It could be a big train wreck. Who knows? But tonight should be the funniest and most exciting wreck fest ever, uh, I hope. I, that was quite a statement because they've all been pretty pretty classic streams and, and events. But 
tonight at 6 p.m. We are going to do that, and it is going to be a blast. So hopefully you'll join us for that. Uh, and if you are in the patron group, you already have the invite. If you're not in the patron, or you will have the invite in a matter of minutes. And if you're not in the patron group, if you're there for the live stream, we'll give out the password once we go live and find out how many of us are taking up spots, and we'll let anybody else join in as well. But if you have not played Wreckfest, you are missing out. I rarely recommend games that aren't super-duper sim-related like what we cover each and every day, but if if there was a game that I was going to recommend just for bang for buck fun, it is Wreckfest. It's an incredible, incredible fun game, even in single-player. So that is going to do it for today's show. Uh, I want to thank you guys all. It's always a blast doing it. Always great topics. And it's great to know that our world of sim racing is just exploding right now. So uh, we're all just along for the ride at various different levels and for different reasons. But here we are. Thank you for being here. That is going to do it for today. This is The Sim Pit. I'm Sean Cole. And I'll see you on the track.